So let's talk about Section 53. You have this conference where all these men get called on missions, and Sidney Gilbert, who was converted by receipt of the Book of Mormon, Parley P. Pratt, this incredible early missionary. I mean, so many members of the church in the early church came into the church through the preaching and the efforts of Parley P. Pratt. I mean, there were other amazing and missionaries. And Oliver Cowdery and the, the four of them. Yeah, and so uh, Parley had sold the Book of Mormon or given a Book of Mormon to Sidney, and Sidney had converted. And he's at this conference, and he doesn't hear his name announced. And so in section 50, well, section 53 is received because he goes to Joseph Smith and says, what about me? What do you, what, I want to build the kingdom of God. So he then initiates this conversation with Joseph. Do, do I have a place to build the kingdom too? And he gets a specific revelation just for him. And I love how God introduces the section. And if you begin in verse two, it says, behold, I, the Lord who was crucified for the sins of the world, give unto you a commandment that you shall forsake the world. I mean, think about that introduction. Not like, I'm the son of God, it's like, I've been crucified, remember the cross, look at the prints in my hands and my feet. It doesn't say all those things. But it also says, forsake the world. Now, Sidney was an incredible businessman. Now, for all of us, we all might struggle to forsake the world, but he was very capable at worldly things. Actually, it's the Gilbert and Whitney store, isn't it? Yeah. Right there in Kirtland. And he gets called, in this section to go down to Missouri to be an agent for the bishop to help Edward Partridge, and he sets up one of the first stores right there in Independence. And it's interesting to me how Sidney is so faithful. Now, this is 1831. He leaves his business in Kirtland, moves to Missouri, and you got to realize Missouri is not a happy place all the time for the early saints. In fact, for, in three years, there's lots of persecution. He gets thrown in jail. He gets arrested. In fact, he dies of cholera. In 1850 or 18, 1834. Just three years Three years later, after this. He's like 45 years old. And he was completely faithful to God's call to build the kingdom in the way that he could. No, notice the very opening to, to 53 along these lines. Verse 1, Behold, I send you my servant, Sidney Gilbert, that I have heard your prayers. Brothers and sisters, in the context coming right after section 52, that's beautiful, that though your name wasn't mentioned in 52, I am fully aware, of, I have heard your prayers, I know your deep desires, and then verse 3, I, I've, I've got this, this assignment for you, verse 3, take upon you mine ordination, even that of an elder, to preach faith and repentance and remission of sins. Have you noticed? this idea of, I'd rather not preach. So what does God call him to do? Go and preach. There's this beautiful concept that shows up over and over and over in Scripture where God finds people resting, succeeding, prospering, just moving along nicely in a comfort zone, and what does he do? He plucks them out of that comfort zone, and where does he drop them? He usually leads them out into a wilderness. What's the root word? Wild. You can't rely on what used to work. You can't rely on your, your possessions, your money, your skills, your connections, your relationships, the, the cooperative group in that comfort zone when you're out in a wilderness. And God keeps bringing these people out of semi-comfort zones at least, from New York and Pennsylvania, bringing them to Kirtland, put your roots in here. Well, for some of them, the roots aren't going to last very long as we're going to find in section 54 before he plucks them back out and sends them further out into the wilderness, and it gets to the point where we could start saying, what am I doing wrong? Why does life have to be so hard? Why? <laughs> Why can't I just enjoy life a little longer? Uh, brothers and sisters, we didn't come down here on this earth for a, a vacation or a, a pleasure trip. We came down here to, to have our test, to have, to have this, this test of faith, this trial of, of our patience, and to, to build character with the help of the Lord working with us throughout this process. 
And that seems to take place a little more effectively out here than it does here. Some of you have heard the old cliche, there's very little growth in a comfort zone, and there's very little comfort in a growth zone. And I think that's what we're seeing over and over. So if your life right now seems a little bit topsy-turvy, a little bit frustrating that it's not more predictable, not more comfortable, perhaps we could bow our head and thank the Lord for giving us opportunities to grow and plead with him to help us learn those lessons and to use that agency that has been given to us to help us to be covenantally faithful and loyal to him and to learn what we need to about him and about ourselves in the process. Uh, briefly, you might remember the Israelites were taken out of civilization out into the wild where they encountered God. Lehi was taken out in the wild where he encountered God. So sometimes God wants us to more fully experience him, and to do that, he's got to get us into the wilds. And we'll get more to the wilderness when we get to 57 as well. Now, look at verse 7. Again, I would that ye should learn that he only is saved who endureth unto the end, even so, amen. You know, among all these stories that we're telling where some people are struggling to keep the, the covenants, this is one of those, Sidney Gilbert, where, where it's just nice to be able to say, this is a guy who did, from our perspective, who did exactly that. He endured to the end and, and endured great persecutions out in a wilderness for the Lord and died three years later of the cholera as a faithful, devoted, and consecrated saint.